Hello. Recently, the folks behind the Docker project, uh, in a perfectly reasonable attempt at monetizing the project, announced that for companies of more than 250 employees or companies of uh, 10 million or more in revenues, they will be forced to transition to a paid model uh, as the project is now moving to a premium model. Uh, Docker for Desktop is still available for free for personal and hobbyist use, but for companies, um, they will need to pay. At uh, $7 USD per user per month, that, say you have about 125 or so engineers in a 250 person company, that comes out to about 10,500 per month or per year. Uh, but you're most likely going to be choosing the Enterprise Edition at $21 per employee per month, and that comes out to about $32,000 or so uh, uh, dollars per year. Again, perfectly normal, perfectly fine for Docker, the company, to monetize like this, um, but uh, for many engineers, uh, they don't need the things that the Docker for Desktop offers. Uh, they don't necessarily need integrations with Kubernetes. Uh, they don't need a graphical interface to their container images. Uh, if you're anything like me, you just need something to run some Linux containers on your Mac workstation. And this is what this video will describe. Uh, so let's move to the prerequisites. So looking at my notes here, you'll need Homebrew. Um, you can go to homebrew.sh and get situated there. Uh, getting installed and up and ready and going with Homebrew is outside of the scope of this um, tutorial, but uh, maybe I'll do another video about that. It's very, very simple. Uh, once you have Homebrew installed, it's, uh, if you're familiar with Linux, it's like a package manager for, for the Mac. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, but it's the closest thing to uh, an Ubuntu app to get uh, that you'll get on a Mac. Other projects include like Mac Porps, um, which is also a very fine. I've just used Homebrew and have muscle memory there, so that's what I bias towards. This channel uh, loves Homebrew. Next, you'll need an internet connection. That goes uh, without saying. I don't know how you're watching this without it. Uh, you'll need a modernish Intel Mac. I have not tested this on Apple Silicon, so if you are uh, lucky to be on an M1 Mac, uh, follow along. Your results may vary. I don't know how it, it will work out, but uh, I'm hoping to maybe get myself an Apple Silicon Mac once they're announced, uh, once the next more pro uh, Macs are announced. Um, and then you'll need to be a little bit familiar with the terminal to uh, follow along, but I will try and make things as easy as possible. The whole process, depending on internet connection and speed of your computer, shouldn't take more than, I don't know, about 10-15 minutes to get up and running. And um, so without further ado, let's, let's dive in. So here uh, in the terminal, we have, uh, this is just iTerm here. Um, so, uh, if you have, um, say you've installed Docker uh, from uh, Homebrew itself, the Docker for Mac uh, setup, uh, setup uh, that way, uh, you'll want to uninstall it. Um, I believe this will also work if you've installed Docker for Mac, downloading the image or the, the installer from the web. Any day. It would be great. I have skipped uh, the installation processes. You don't. It's going to be the similar on your machine. You don't necessarily need to wait to watch it install on mine. So we have. Uh, what we'll need to do is uh, make sure that we have. Let's start making sure that Docker works. Okay, at least the client works. That's good. Uh, to do a Docker PS, it will fail. We don't have a Docker daemon running. We don't have a VM to talk to. 
to run Docker, to run our Linux containers on our Mac. This is fine, that makes sense. So let's create one. Um, if you run a Docker machine, let's make sure that that works. Okay, yes, Docker machine uh, create help. This will give you a bunch of uh, parameters that you can use to create your um, your VM. Um, give be sure to give your Docker VM enough space to uh, store containers that you create and uh, give it enough RAM to to run them. I have a set of parameters that I like to use and they are as follows. So if you so this uh, and I will put this in the in the notes. I'll put all these commands in the notes as well. So this is a call to docker machine. Obviously a call to create. We're using the virtual box driver which happens to be the default. This size here is measured in megabytes. Uh, so this is 100 gigs. Uh, the memory is 8, 8 GB of memory. Uh, 8192s uh, in, measured in megabytes. It's power of 2, I forget what it is. 2 to the something gives you 8192. Um, we are uh, giving it 4 virtual CPUs and I've named it Foo. I like to give my VMs stupid names. So we'll run this. So you'll notice that it's um, running through a series of steps. It's going to create your VM. It's going to um, bootstrap it with this uh, boot to Docker ISO. It's going to create an SSH key, which is important. Um, basically, it's going to do all the things that you want it to do. Okay, now that we're done, we need to um, add this to our bash.rc or zsh uh, uh, file for our shell. So let's look at uh, mine. So, I've got, um, these are some various functions that I have here. Uh, the one that makes, that you, you're going to want to use is this. Adding this, uh, if we basically, if we run this, it will issue a bunch of, um, it will export a bunch of environment variables that will uh, allow your Docker client to now connect to this new VM that we've created. So let me uh, re update my shell here. Uh, and here you can see uh, all of these container things. So now if we do Dr. PS, we we actually have something the the client's all configured. We go to Docker context. Um, you can see that we have the default is now connecting to this VM that we've created. So um, yeah, we're almost there. And now, if we want to make sure that it's running. Let's run a, a test container. So Docker run Now we have this um, nginx container running. Um, one thing, if you there's not any magic, it's it's good to know where things are. So if you want to inspect the VM that has been created, um, 
We can open VirtualBox. And you'll see it here. Uh, foo, it's running. So, anyways. Um, okay. So, so now we have everything's working as normal. Uh, let's make sure that we can access uh, our container because that's the whole point. Uh, and here you go. This is coming from our uh, our virtual machine, or basically our, our container. So one convenient uh, environment variable you could use would be this. Um, so what this will do is uh, give you an, an easy way to do something like this. So you can not you don't necessarily have to hard code the IP address of your new VM uh, for, for Docker. Um, it's, it's still a little rough around the edges. Um, I think with Docker for desktop, the, the paid version or like the, the fancy official version, um, the networking is set up by default to be on the host so you can um, basically do things as if you're a local host. Uh, that, I think that's a non-issue because of this way to reference the VM itself. Um, you have some something like 65,000 or so ports on a single VM that you can open. So you can go to town and run some 30 plus thousand containers, you know, I think, if that's even possible. And you won't run out of ports, so you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Now you have a working free uh, Docker on your Mac that uh, you don't necessarily need to pay for. And, um, but you should. If, if, if the company is going to pay, and uh, I think the project could benefit from the money, and they've definitely changed the industry, and um, they've earned it. But uh, if for whatever reason you don't, need the product and you don't necessarily want to pay, this is a way uh, to get around it. Thanks for watching.